What's up guys? So today's been a fairly interesting week for Guild Wars 2. Just later on today, we're going to be getting the next Raid Wing Salvation Pass dropped into the game that should cater to at least a sizable chunk of our audience. But also we've had the big news of the game director Colin Johansson leaving the company, as well as a whole bunch of other information associated with that about, in general, the game's future. It's been three and a half years since Guild Wars 2 first came out, so I thought I'd take the time today, as it's been something on my mind, especially with the recent news, to talk about kind of the state of the game, as far as I see it, as far as we, the players, see it. State of the game articles the uh, devs occasionally do, where they talk about how things have been going for them. Of course, we had one quite recently after the first expansion. But that question is on everyone's mind right now. What is keeping us playing the game? Is this something we want to continue spending time on? Is this uh, something that's got big payoff for us in the future? And I think we can actually, despite maybe some bad news that's come from this AMA we've had recently, that's come from the game director leaving, actually we do have, in my opinion, a clearer picture of where Guild Wars 2 is as a franchise and where it's going than we have throughout the entirety of Guild Wars 2's life. And before Guild Wars 2 launched, we were in the dark for years before as well, not even sure when the release date would be and so on, and just clinging to Guild Wars 1, which was shrinking and shrinking. So I think there is something positive there, and I think we should look at that information and that added new transparency we have to talk about exactly what's going on. I kind of want to look at the various different branches of the game. Each audience, obviously, we have three big main ones. We've got the world versus worlders, the PvPers, and the PvEers, and exactly to what extent all three of these audiences are actually being catered to. First of all, I promised you guys in an earlier video this week that I would give you some follow-up thoughts on Colin Johansson's leaving as game director. And the well, one thing I will add to this topic that I don't think I really discussed before, uh, and has become very apparent as this information is propagated throughout the community, is actually it seems a lot of people are quite happy that Colin's leaving. On the one hand, you might associate him with some of the better times of Guild Wars 2, you might uh, look at him as being a front man when obviously we're excited about future expansions and so on coming out But I think there are a few more cynical of us out there who look at this man as someone who maybe Was holding the game back in certain respects and it could be a good thing to see a change of game director The classic example I've heard so much of this week is actually Diablo 3 when they saw a big change of hands at the head of a lot of the management and development uh, The game suddenly swung in a very different direction a lot of people really enjoyed it and I suppose that is a possibility you can't just take oh this guy is leaving and there's some turbulence internally at ArenaNet as a bad thing. This is an opportunity for someone else, whether that to be an inside hire at ArenaNet or someone external, to come in, assess the situation, and perhaps push the game to where it needs to be. Obviously for us though, as players, and don't be deceived by people in the forums and comments who act like they know what they're talking about, for those of us who are just players of the game, it is very hard for us to assess exactly what impact this will have on the game. We really don't know how much, uh, how many of the teams at ArenaNet, how many of the systems they have employed, how many of their best practices work, even without the guidance of someone like a, a game director working on various things. It could be that very little changes altogether. So that alone is enough to throw some shakiness over the future, but then I think that's why it's a good thing many of the devs came forward and talked very clearly about what they're working on. So, uh, where is things still a little bit more cagey? There are three main areas for the game that I believe the devs have still not been very transparent with us, and I do want to get those out of the way with first of all. Number one, the Super Adventure Box. Super Adventure Box has had a very funny history. It was added as almost like a side project for, that a few devs worked on and surprised us with in April Fools two years ago. People thoroughly enjoyed it. The second update came out. People backlashed against it. Priorities uh, in the company were shifted elsewhere, and development for future updates was put on hold. Then then it became this huge thing that suddenly everyone was nostalgic about and everybody desperately wanted to come back But ArenaNet had to hold up their hands and say well no hold on we're, we're working on different things right now We're not doing anything with it and it's become this notorious oh it will never return thing Definitely more recently we have heard more from the devs uh, about Super Adventure Box And we have had comments on the, from the, the world of data mining that perhaps it will be returning I think a lot of us are looking at early April as some kind of big release But the devs haven't been clear 
This obviously though, and I, I do feel the need to state this, isn't one of the core pillars of Guild Wars 2's content. If you're only looking at continuing playing Guild Wars 2 just because of Super Adventure Books, I think you're in for a bit of a mistake. Even in the world where when they add Super Adventure Books back, which they've confirmed will happen at some point, it's a permanent addition to the game rather than something temporary as we saw it existing before, even in that world, I don't think that's going to be enough to retain, you know, massive numbers of players or is truly what Guild Wars 2 is all about. It's a fun update, it's an update a lot of us are looking for, it's an update we don't know when it's coming, but we should just leave it there. Let's not pretend that it's going to become something much bigger than it really is. Anyway, that's hazy thing number one. Hazy thing number two is Living World Season 1. I was pretty saddened by the Colin AMA, of which, by the way, I did end up trying to ask a question. Colin uh, was the developer for one of my favourite bonus mission pack missions from Guild Wars 1, the Tengu Accords, and I've always been intrigued by his role there. I wanted to hear some information, which I never ended up getting in the end. But like me, very few, if anybody, actually asked about Living World Season 1. The story here is that for pretty much a year and a half after Guild Wars 2's release, the devs focused entirely on a bunch of updates, eventually known as Living World Season 1, that were all temporary. What does that mean? That means for your average person who comes into Guild Wars 2 these days, they don't get to see anything that the devs worked on for all that period of time. It's why we had to wait so long for Heart of Thorns, and it's why when we finally got Heart of Thorns that they kind of rushed it in the end as well, and that ended up so short. Living World Season 1 really is of no value to anyone in Guild Wars 2 anymore until it's added back. Now, just before Heart of Thorns was released, the devs did say it was in their plans to release this story back into the game, to re-add it, but not as a temporary format, but as permanent content. The best time for them to have done this would have been before the expansion, so that people could come in, they could play the core story, they could then play the season one story, the season two story, and move into the expansion. That makes perfect sense, right? But they didn't do that. They told us instead that they were focusing on Heart of Thorns first, and Living World Season 1 would come after Heart of Thorns. Well, hey guys, it's now after Heart of Thorns, and they've been talking about a lot of their updates and what they're doing, and still no information on Season 1. Perhaps this is a case of me as an in individual wooden potato who's who really wants to see Season 1 and thinks it's important, while most of the player base out there doesn't, and we're pretty happy to see it go bye-bye. But I am a little upset that currently, with the state of the game, we have no idea when Season 1 will return, if ever. It always seems the devs have got something bigger and better to focus on, which is a total shame considering how much of that is playable content that just needs to be repurposed ever so slightly. And then finally, the third and final hazy thing we don't know enough about right now, and I think criminally little about, is not some small element of PvE or some small element of PvP, it's an entire game type. Obviously, it's World vs. World. World vs. World is in a sorry state right now. World vs. World uh, experienced some interesting uh, activity and fun times for a little while during the early uh, updates of Guild Wars 2. During Season 1, we even had some seasons and some tournaments for World vs. World. But slowly, as time has gone by, as the maps got older, as the mechanics got older, as people found more problems inherent to the way World vs. World was set up, the population for that game type leaked. And because it is a game type that is so reliant on having a lot of players, this large world scale PvP, because it's so reliant on that, you found a lot of servers end up dying, and the game type is almost unplayable in the way it truly could be for a long time. So then Heart of Thorns releases. Heart of Thorns was supposed to be a big revitalization of World vs. World. It was adding new map, was changing the way that guilds interacted with World vs. World, and in theory could have been exactly what the format needed. But the devs dropped the ball, the devs didn't understand what that community really wanted, really understood to be fun about World vs. World, and Heart of Thorns did absolutely nothing for it. The, the format, if, if anything, the population for that format of the game is even less now than it has been in the past, and everyone is holding on to a supposed big overhaul. The one thing the devs have consistently told us is that now for their three core structures of the game, the main systems are in place. The way we handle progression, the way we get unlock new skills, the way that content is delivered in expansions versus in living world. All these big systems are kind of in place. They're not in a place anymore with Guild Wars 2 where they want to experiment and trash old systems and implement new ones, except for World vs. World. World vs. World is the one last place that needs a big overhaul that they supposedly been working on for well over a year now 
and yet the update still hasn't managed to see the light of day. Not only this, but the devs are very cagey on the details. Even while being very transparent about many other things in this large Ask Me Anything thread, usually when World vs. World came up, and there were a lot of questions about World vs. World, a lot of people interested in what's in store for it, the most response we got, the most clarification we got, was that this big update that the devs had been working on continued to increase in scope. They found that they were in a situation where World vs. World hasn't had an update for a long time, so they want to have a really big, cool update to bring everyone back and, you know, make everybody really excited. But then as they work on the big, cool update, it's been even longer since World vs. World's had an update, and now they want an even bigger one to fill the gap, and then they want an even bigger one, and they kind of snowball downhill. But that may sound ridiculous, that may sound unprofessional, however, I will say that I personally have a lot of experience with this mentality, and I can understand how easy it is to fall down that rabbit hole, especially when it's pretty much entirely driven and fueled by your desire to impress people and to make people happy and to make them feel like it was worth the wait. And of course, hindsight is always 2020. So that's basically all we know. What else? It's up in the air. There's been uh, interesting data mine posts. There have been supposed leaks in the past, but nothing verified by the devs in any major way. And that, uh, that is a real shame because one of the three core ways to play Guild Wars 2 at the moment is kind of dead here in early 2016. Moving on from that, let's not dwell on what they're not telling us much about. Let's have a look at the fairly sizable list of what we do know is going on now uh, for the other areas of the game. Mostly this is going to be PvE focused, but we'll talk about the PvP stuff going on as well. Uh, now, first of all, on the PvE side of things, I do want to mention the raids. Of course, uh, we're having a raid update. Wing 2 is releasing very soon. They seem to be on a very tight, very well understood schedule for when the new wings come out. If Salvation in Pass is of the same quality that the first wing was at, I actually think for those of us who play Guild Wars 2 for the raids, we are in a really good place, but possibly one of the best places you can be. You're going to have a lot of content, you're going to have consistent content coming out, you're going to have rewarding content coming out, something to look forward to very frequently. Even those of us who are quite into the story too, but maybe not capable of raiding, at least we'll have a few new maps we can explore, even if we may not be able to defeat the bosses in them, and uh, some speculation, some discussion, we can do some things to talk about as the story envelope continues to get pushed as well with these new raids coming out. So I actually think raids, super helpful the area of the game. It's uh, really interesting that in the AMA, one of the devs said that Guild Wars 2 experiences a higher percentage of its game population playing raids than most other competing MMOs, and by a significant margin. Raiding, I think, is the one big thing for me, personally, that Heart of Thorns delivered on superbly and let's hope it continues to. They've at least got their game plan to have it continuing too. Now, on the idea of end game PvE stuff, obviously you've got raids for the 10 man, and the idea is fractals for the five man. We do know there's a fractal team in existence. The Ask Me Anything did announce that there are already a bunch of new fractals in the works. One of them potentially is gonna be based off of an existing encounter that was somewhere in Guild Wars 2, whether that's a living world season one thing or whether that's a currently playable thing, just maybe in some obscure personal story. I'm not really sure. But we do know that they've got that team working. We do know some of the ideas that they have for Fractals to revitalize them, to make them more fun. And as soon as Fractals are fixed, as soon as the dungeon nerf that happened with Heart of Thorns, where some of the gold that you could get from dungeons was taken away, as soon as that is reverted to, we're actually going to see that endgame PvE space in a really good place. It's just a question of, are we going to see that Fractal update within the next three to four months or so? My gut says yes, and uh, if that ends up coming through, again, I actually think that's a, a good place for the game to be at. And if those are the kind of things that interest you as a player, there's probably still a lot of reason to keep interested. On the other side of things for PvE, Living World Season 3 is not coming for a long time. So here's the idea that Guild Wars 2 should be running with, and that's that they have an expansion, a big bulk of boxed paid content that is satisfactory and content rich, uh, so you feel like you got your money worth. And then while waiting for the developers to make the next expansion in two or three years, you have constantly streaming in active updates known as the Living World that continue to push the story. The Living World is the bridge between the expansions. And this is a great idea, but so far with Heart of Thorns, we have not seen that manifest. The Ask Me Anything did clarify uh, that it would at least seem their original idea was to have Living World Season 3 roll out very quickly after Heart of Thorns concluded. But for one reason or another, who knows what those are, 
that didn't end up coming true and we've had an extraordinary wait and it could be if you're very optimistic quarter two of this year or if you're a little bit more pessimistic like I am and if you really read between the lines it would strike me that we're looking at quarter three of 2016 before Living World season three comes out so while you may have a lot coming up and a lot of cool things to do as a PvE player if you like raids and fractals if you're only doing it for the Living World story you're kind of SOL. There's very little to do for your average PvE meta event loving person. On that note as well, another supplement to that kind of content, another thing that could have been keeping uh, people playing the game while waiting for Living World Season 3, are the new legendary weapons. So the idea again is that over the year, until the next expansion comes out, we get more legendary weapons dropped into the game, and that doesn't just mean a flashy random item, but that means a lengthy, almost quest-like scavenger hunt progression to acquire that item and that in itself feeds you into a lot of content that in itself hopefully gets people interested and keeps them playing the game but where are the legendary weapons again we know that they have a team that are working on them we know that the short bow and the mace are the furthest along in development how many will they add and how frequently like in in what batches are they going to come in batches of three are they going to add a whole ton all at once we don't know all we really know is that there are not going to be any underwater weapons with the next generation of legendary weapons and that's basically it. So uh, the falling on their faces here in my opinion with some of the more fundamental things they should be providing people to do in PvE without the goals, without those legendary weapons, without the cool rewards, people are just going to experience a very short Heart of Thorn story and then wonder what else there is to do and leave until the next expansion. Next within the PvE spectrum I would say, or maybe this affects all of us, Guildhall stuff. Again, another thing within, we know that Arena Net have going on is they have a Guildhall team. The Guildhall team was one of the teams I was most impressed with for the release of Heart of Thorns. HOT, for wherever it was lackluster, I actually don't believe it was lackluster when it came to Guild features. The arenas are a great idea. The upgrades, the uh, incentive for people to run Guild missions together is all fantastic. The uh, decoration system is fantastic. It's just that these systems need focus. They need TLC and they need to be brought up to a place where they can really shine and believe me when these guild systems shine They really will one thing Guild Wars 2 suffers from as a theme park MMO as in it delivers to us canned content that you experience And there's not too much variation within there is that it doesn't have too much inherent Replayability to its content streams the guild systems should they get that tender loving care really will have that you could have players who spend months just experiencing different PvE arenas within their guild hall, different game types that they construct with their friends, and playing different decoration games, constructing houses for themselves, and so on. But these systems, the way that they interact with the economy, the way that they interact with the new crafting discipline scribing, the way that they interact with the mega servers right now, mean that they are not up to par. When are those updates coming? We don't know. Yeah, are you guys seeing a little bit of a pattern here? It's frustrating, and it happens over and over again. Now, to be fair, maybe I should hold my tongue a little. One of the surefire things we do know is coming very soon, supposedly, is a large patch focused on reducing Heart of Thorns grind. So the expansion, while good in some places and poor in others, one thing is fairly undisputable. In many places, it didn't fall in line with Guild Wars 2's core tenants. The idea that you can jump in the game, play whenever you like, and get some reward out of it, kind of doesn't line up with Heart of Thorns, where the meta events require that you wait an hour or so before you can even play with other people, and then wait another hour and a half to actually complete the stuff. I mean, Christ, Dragon Stand can be a real pain. So there is a slated patch to fix and address that, and maybe bundled in with it will be those quality of life guild hall improvements, but I am pessimistic that it will really cover the full gamut of what that area of the game is needing. Once again, we're on the edge of something that could have been really good, and then wasn't really good. And so that's pretty much it for the PvE side of things. We do, of course, have the next expansion coming. It was revealed to exist. I don't think you can say that Guild Wars 2 is dying or is a dead game when there's still expansions that are actively being worked on it. I think if ArenaNet are smart, they will push this expansion out faster than the three years it took them to go from the core game to their first expansion. Probably a two yearly cycle as we see is so successful with World of Warcraft would be a good idea from them there too. But they're very cagey about this, obviously. They haven't talked about it very much and I think most of us are focusing on that time before the next expansion. Uh, elite specializations were confirmed to only be coming with expansions, so don't expect any 
any of those in the meantime either, by the way. And that's pretty much everything. The last thing to talk about is PvP. And just like for those in the PvE community who like to raid, I actually think the other people who should be more satisfied than any others at the moment are the PvPers. Yes, there are always going to be issues people take with the current meta, but the meta shifts and it's shifting frequently and ArenaNet's plans to have seasons are working very well. It's still very rewarding to climb those. There's still a lot of players. Matchmaking is faster than ever. We're free to play for Guild Wars 2. Yeah, it's even easier for people to drop in and experience some of the PvP for themselves. And I really do think that that is a very healthy area of the game right now. Of course, there are improvements that can be made. Of course, it's disappointing when we hear that the devs aren't going to be looking at the in-game leaderboard, for example, and that still might be kind of hollow. But their ideas that they presented to us a while ago that there would be these frequent balance patches between seasons so far have entirely been true. And the metas have swung enough and changed enough that Season 2 has felt very different to Season 1. And I find myself playing PvP quite a lot. I find myself looking forward to Season 3 of PvP. So I think that, again, is actually one of the areas, especially considering considering how low and how bad PvP has been in this game's history before. PvP is one of the more healthy places and continues to be on the rise. So that at least is nice. And there you go, guys. That's, that's basically the state of Guild Wars 2 early 2016. Hopefully this was interesting to some of you who maybe haven't been playing for a while or have been wondering exactly what's going on. I will, of course, continue to do updates and videos telling you guys as more patches come out. That's where we stand. I would say if you want a general level of optimism versus pessimism from me, I'm about in the middle ground, and I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. I'd love to hear what you guys think, if you're generally pessimistic or op optimistic in all the news that came out recently. It's kind of nice to sit back and look at everything all in summation, so do feel free to talk about that in the comments. But uh, until tomorrow, when I'll be talking to you about the new Raid Wing, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you next time. professionals in their workspace talking about how they do their jobs talking about the tools they use their inspirations and also i've got to admit maybe this is just me maybe you guys can back me up here but i always find myself when a dev comes on i'm scrutinizing them and thinking hmm how much do you actually play the game Let, let's really see what you know and you just wait for basic questions about the way that the expansion or something comes up to see whether they can answer and if they can't you're like yeah i knew it you you, you don't play this go, go back to world of warcraft you're in blade and soul right now i know you are